Hey everybody, happy Monday. Thank you so much for clicking on this video today. I wanted to provide you guys a step-by-step -step buyer's guide on what you guys should do when you are looking to buy a house in the future. These are just some steps that you guys can take that'll make it a little bit easier and the process a lot smoother. I know this is a really stressful time for a lot of people. So using this will help you guys and of course, it's gonna be a little generic just because the video can only be 10 minutes long. But if you guys have any further questions, please feel free to message me or reach out to me in any way. Um, I'm always here to help you guys and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Okay, step number one is just gonna be to interview and select an agent. Um, if you guys don't already know, a buyer's agent or the person who you choose to represent you through the process is completely free to you. Um, this is going to be a topic for another video, but just real quick, um, that being said, they are free, but you should still be extremely picky with who you choose because they are representing you on the biggest purchase of your life and a lot of things can go wrong. So you do want the right agent to represent you in this case. Step two is just to sit down with your agent and evaluate your needs and your wants in your new house. Um, just basically to talk about this and make sure you get the thing that you are looking for most. Um, step three is to get pre-qualified for a loan. Um, a lot of people can get offended by this. Please do not get offended by this. This basically just helps save everybody's time. Um, also, you wanna start this process early out. So you wanna get pre qualified like, I don't know. I wanna say like three months in advance just because if you need to fix anything on your credit to make sure that your interest rate's lower or anything they can adjust and work with you to make sure you are in the best possible position to buy a house and make sure that you can afford the maximum amount that you are looking to buy um and this helps save everybody time so that way you're not looking at houses that you can afford and your agents not constantly going out and showing you houses that are like 400 when you can only qualify for about 350 um, these are just little important things that help save a lot of time in the future. Okay, so step four is just going to be to find the perfect house for you and put an offer in. So going back to being pre qualified you want to be ready and pre qualified before you put an offer in. Um, you have to have your pre qual when submitting your offer to make sure you can afford the house and you're not wasting anyone's time. So that being said, you want to have that ready and available inventory is super low right now and anything that's well priced and is decent is going so fast just because of all the people that are moving here and because of how short inventory is. So you want to be ready to jump on anything the second it comes to market. So you're basically just going to talk with your agent. Um, they are going to advise you on maybe if you need closing costs, then what to put your purchase price at, different things. You're going to find out what you can afford and what puts you in the best position, but also gives the seller a strong offer to make sure you get yours accepted and everybody is happy. So we put in a good, strong offer. Um, your agent was really good at negotiating and you got it accepted. So now you guys are going to open escrow. So once you choose a title company, which will be in the original um, offer, they are going to ask for your earnest money and that is gonna be deposited most likely within three days of purchase contract acceptance. If you guys don't know what a title company is, basically they handle all the documents and get everything in line and help you close within a certain time. So yes, the title company that you choose is important. I don't even know what step I'm on because I haven't really been counting, but let's just go with step five. Okay, so now you are going to begin the loan process with your lender. You're basically just going to go tell them what house you chose and they are going to start digging deep into 
everything and make sure that you can actually qualify and then start getting the money ready to loan you within the 30 days or whenever your closing date is. Um, they're gonna make sure that they can get everything on time and whatnot. So the next one is property inspection. You want to do this. Um, you're gonna do this early out as early as you can after contract acceptance um, because you do have a deadline that you have to return your repair request in. Um, but if you guys don't know what an inspection is, basically you hire a licensed inspector and they come out and inspect everything on the house. You can have them inspect the sewer. Um, they can they do the air conditionings, outlets, literally everything, and basically give you a list of what maybe some serious problems that are wrong with the house and maybe some not so serious problems that are wrong with the house and then you discuss with your agent what you want fixed and you negotiate with the seller um, basically things that maybe they're willing to fix for you or maybe you're not going to ask for anything at all um, depending on how serious the issues are yes inspection reports are normally really really long their job is to find every little tiny thing that is wrong with the house but this just gives you an idea of what you can expect in the future. Maybe your air conditioning is okay, but it might break within like the next year or two. So these are just things they're gonna tell you and can save you thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars had you not gotten an inspection and just bought a house that you had no idea what was wrong. All right, so then you're gonna get your property appraisal and this is basically just somebody who comes in and tells you how much the home is worth. They're going to look at comps. They're going to look at um, upgrades you've done to the house, a bunch of different things. And if the sale price, say, is over the appraisal value, so say you bought a house or you really liked a house and you put an offer in at three fifty, dollars most of the time the appraisal will either come out right at or just above. But say the appraisal comes in at like 320, then this opens up a whole new negotiation process because the lender is not gonna loan more than what the house is worth. So you're either gonna have to come out of pocket for that difference or the seller, which most likely is gonna happen, which I highly recommend happens, is the seller is gonna come down in price um, if they're not willing to do that, then I personally would walk away from the deal. Um, but most of the time, your lender is the person who hires the appraiser. So if it comes back lower, this just starts a whole new issue. Um, and yeah. Okay, so I did forget to mention the Binzer and the Clue. Basically, um, your seller is going to provide this to you. So the clue is going to be an insurance policy. It's going to be a letter that the insurance company provides to you just stating whether or not there have been any claims on the home in the past. And then the Binzer is going to be a full list of things that um, they know about the house. Um, so say something went wrong in the past, there was a flood or there was a leak they must disclose this to you if you for some reason find out that they um, lied and didn't put it in the binzer but they knew about it you oh my gosh this ends up in a huge lawsuit issue which we don't want to happen so the seller is going to disclose everything they know and based off the information they provide you based off the inspection report and the appraisal you have a specific time period for each thing to decide with your agent if you want to keep moving forward with the deal or not. Okay, so those are just some of the major things that happen during the buyer um, process. Obviously, there's a few more things that happen like signing documents, getting your loan funded, all that stuff. Um, but if you have any questions, please feel free to message me and I'm happy to help you guys with anything you need. Of course, you already know this. Um, all right, that's about it. Happy Monday again, and I hope you guys have a great day.